I'll begin with you first. Uh, content creation and content creators economy are becoming huge. Okay, there are hundreds and thousands of content creators. You know, now coming, you know, now you know, digital have given birth to hundreds and thousands of content creators in India. How do you see, you know, the rise of this economy? Um, it's a, it's a. It's a very broad, very critical question, but I'll just start by saying the moment you attach the word economy to any industry, you know that it's already going to blow up, right? And I think the fact that we've been hearing economy linked to creators now, uh, I'm sure Nick's been hearing it for a while, but we've been hearing it in a very serious way over these last, I would say, effectively three odd years. Uh, the pandemic has had a huge role to play uh, in the impact of these incredible content creators. Uh, and I think the most important thing to realize is that um, the big shift that's happening, I think the creator economy in our lives has been fully integrated for a very long time. But what's happening now is I think whilst the medium uh, has been very critically digital, right. I think the fact of the matter is that now it's truly just a medium. I right. think these creators are starting to transcend uh, their medium, which is where they were born. And they're starting to have impact in the real world scenario as well, which is where you're seeing a very strong amalgamation of all the other popular culture industries with these creators. They're seeing very strong relationships between Bollywood and creators, True. music and creators, and music which is not only Bollywood music, which is a big driver, but independent music. You're seeing a very strong amalgamation of sports and creators. Um, and the other thing that you'll, that you'll notice is that as opposed to a couple of years ago, and I'm being very generic in my timelines, mm -hmm. where creators were more of promotional tools and partners, the hot creators coming and being promotional tools and partners, today they are genuine collaborators. Today right. they are actually coming in and leading the creative thought. They are actually critical to the strategy behind a piece of content as opposed to just the distribution. Now if you combine that with the big numbers, the creative economy is driving a thousand crores in business, you combine that with some of the numbers you just dropped, you combine that with the fact that, uh, I mean it's all for us to know, right? Meta and Instagram are dropping a creator marketplace, every major platform today whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Mod, whether it's uh, the global platforms outside of where we're at right now, like TikTok, etc. They are all, their, their critical mission is how do we keep stickiness with the creator Correct. through creator marketplace, Correct. right? Uh, and that was not their original idea. They're supposed to be the stage. But today they want to have a role to play in pushing the creator forward. So I think these factors and, and these, these uh, movements are really what make me believe that this is, I don't, think, I don't even think we can say billion dollar you know, economy, because those numbers are small. We're literally talking about a juggernaut that's uh, here to stay now, and we're all going to be part of it and, and enjoy the ride, I think. No, absolutely. I mean, like, you know, this, this number is increasing, you know, as the, the, the creator base is increasing. You know, Nick, um, there's a mindset change. You know, people are now seeing uh, content creation as a career, okay? They, you know, they see that, you know, that they can earn money, they can make money, and they can make a living out of it, and it's a long-term thing. So what has got this mindset change? I think uh, uh, I would like to talk about myself. Like I started off probably like nine years ago. Right. When uh, we used to be not called as creator, we used to be called as YouTubers because that was the only uh, platform back then that was happening. And uh, I think the only thing on YouTube back then was probably like your movie trailers or like your uh, songs and stuff like that. So I think we started not thinking about it as like we can ever make money out of it or like can think about it as careers. But then we started it, we started seeing people from the West making a living out of it. We, believe, we believed in it, we started doing it. And that's what I, I guess, that's the change that came. Like when people now watch us do good and make money out of it, then they feel that, you know, I live at Dombivli. So a guy from Dombivli who used to be a bartender for like eight years can make a living out of making videos, right. anyone can. Right. You know, uh, you know, also, uh, what are the key drivers, you know, uh, what are the key drivers of this you know, creator's economy that you mentioned? I mean, like, you know, what are the fundamentals that are driving this growth? And, you know, as you say that the billion, the billion dollar economy is still a, a conservative number. So, you know, if it expands, you know, what will be driving force behind it? Um, I think the key drivers are going to be the fact that, um, we're, we're obviously living in an age where uh, content consumption, uh, not just on mobile, but also our, 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 uh, our attitude towards content creation is one that is, I think, 
rapidly evolving. Right. We are, uh, you know, and, and, and I'll talk about different aspects, right? We've, we've gone from a moment where we used to say short format content to today, if you talk to anybody in this room that talks to, you know, Gen Z and talks to the younger millennials, the truth is today, they talk more in meme languages and memes than they would in actual English, Hindi or a regional language, right? They say good morning to each other in the form of a meme, right? Correct. And some of these guys like Nick, I mean, they've, they've, without even putting a science behind it, they've been talking that language for like half a decade, right? So I think to your point, what are the key drivers? The key drivers are that our content consumption pattern has changed rapidly. Okay. Uh, we, have, we have a much wider fo format of how we actually bring content into our world. And that is being served very powerfully, I believe, from the creator space overall. Um, the other big driver is that if you just look at the massive pipe site, right? if I was to put a, I don't know, if I was to put a, a Reliance example, right, their petrochemicals business and their oils business is the, is the critical old school business, but right. those are the other pipes. But if you think about Geo, uh, Geo is what is actually driving economies forward through everything to do with content and communication. So I would actually say, in the world of entertainment, everything legacy is the petrochemical and oils business. And these guys are the geo, right? They're literally coming in and they're going to be the way forward. And every, every single popular culture uh, feature that interacts with them, it is up to them to find that value, to extract the value. And it is up to the creator's maturity. Because, I mean, it's important what Nick is saying, right? He started off as a much younger man and he'll tell you himself, perhaps he's <laughs> a much more mature man today. But these are kids. Yeah. A large chunk of them are young kids, yeah, absolutely. right? And their maturity, their grooming, their um, rapid growth uh, as individuals and as communities, the way they interact with the world around them is going to have a very big role to play because it's also a responsibility. I mean, it's a whole, it's a completely separate conversation. But I'm saying these are some of the drivers that I think are going to make sure that this becomes an industry, a genuine industry that you cannot ignore, but you have to have a part of every strategy of yours if you're working in an organized setup. I think, or I want to add that I, I feel that the roots, like the, the acceptance now from like, say, your parents, it's accepted for, to being a creator right now. And that's what, that, 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 that is the root, I guess. Because if you don't accept your kid being a creator, I don't think there will be enough people doing what they're doing right now. Correct. correct. So, you know, um, like you mentioned that, you know, that uh, acceptability is, is pretty important. And especially, you know, at the family level, the acceptability has, has changed. So what are the genres, I mean, like, you know, around which the content is, is uh, uh, getting created and you know, content creators are coming across which genres, you know. And there are niche genres also, I understand that, you know, where the content creators are coming. I think that's a very wide topic. Like, there are genres that I haven't explored yet, like there's... Uh, we make funny videos, so I, I do skit comedy, there's like stand-up over there, there's creators who are doing freestyle football, there are right. creators who are playing music, there are creators who are doing gaming right now, it's expanding, there are creators who are vlogging, and the best part about this, this is that you don't have to stick to, to a genre, right? Uh, I, I do music too, Correct. and I do comedy too, so I don't have to like stick to one genre, and uh, there's nobody to judge, like okay. you know, that what is this? In fact, the more... Uh, the more unique stuff that you make, the uh, better originality. Get, yeah. The yeah. more, the more, it's more original, or if, if it's more unique, it's easier for you to like catch the eye and you know stuff like that. So there's no specific genre. I don't think it's a very wide uh, topic. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I think if I was just to add uh, more than what are the type of genres, I think what we're seeing is that. Um, different industries that are going through their sunrise moments, right? Okay. You will find a very strong explosion of creators in that space. Mm -hmm. So right now, India as a whole is going through a fintech revolution, right? right? And there is a, there's a constant interplay with the RBI, and there's a constant interplay of what is allowed, what is not, and you know all of these incredible startups out of Bangalore who are, you know, fighting for more smarter payments, you know what the world, what, what is happening with UPI. In fact, you know, I saw a statistic today about the top 10 economies in the world and the usage of visa. And we are one of the only economies in the world where UPI is ahead of visa, right? Uh, which is crazy if you think about it, given the, given the head start that visa had in, even in a country like ours, right? So the point I'm trying to make is that um, in, in this particular case, uh, you'll see that when there are industries that are exploding, the creator ecosystem that has intelligence in that area will explode with it. So today, finance creators, for example, have a huge role to play in a responsible way in terms of what they're actually going out and impacting consumer you know, behavior or they're impacting 
brand awareness and salience. Similarly, tomorrow, if we're going to have, like, EdTech had its moment. Correct. EdTech is starting to plateau a little bit, but EdTech had a huge moment. And similarly, I mean, we're going to see it in pharma, we're going to see it in various other sectors. Experts in that field who have found a way to put their um, intelligence and creativity out there, utilizing any medium they want to, those are going to be the genres that are going to happen. So exactly what Nick said, it's too broad. You, you, we do not know where the next mega creator is going to come from. It, it, it'll be an interplay with the industry that's and I think you up. rightly mentioned that, you know, every industry is having their sunrise moment because uh, you rightly gave the fintech example. So two years ago, you know, post, uh, you know, with the start of the pandemic, I believe the fintech influencers, they emerged, you know, how to invest, you know, how to... Uh, you know, they started creating those how-to videos, you know, invest in the markets, invest in the insurances. So now this genre is becoming bigger. And I was researching a few days ago, I mean, like, there were many, many content creators across yeah. this genre, and it's becoming big. Yeah, because it's ever, uh, this is everlasting, dude. Like, a how-to video has very long shelf life. Like, you, okay. you're still going to search how-to. Right. Like, I make funny videos, I'm just going to post it out. People watch it, people share it, that's about it. Like, it doesn't have a shelf life. Like, the how-to videos... Uh, probably people 20 years later are still going to search how to dress well. Like it's still right. going to work. That's why I guess uh, that's, uh, that, uh, that segment is exploding. You know, a while ago, Nick, you were talking about the originality of the content. Okay. So when you started as a YouTuber, I mean, like the idea was pretty important that, you know, that there was hardly any content that was created. So you guys were created, I mean, like that was more of original content. But is the new breed of the content creators, are they focusing more on coming up with those innovative scripts, innovative ideas? Are they creating that original content? It's your, in your, in your opinion. I mean, uh, I can't uh, widely say about everybody, but I don't see enough. It's just uh, same stuff in like different ways. Uh, I think it's because there's so much content in the market right now that You'll be like, okay, if this is working, and this is what happens, uh, that if somebody does something that works, people try to Im imitate that. And uh, back when we started doing videos, uh, I used to watch a lot of uh, Key and Peel. Have you guys heard of Key and Peel? The sketch comedy show hmm. on Comedy Central and Dave Chappelle shows and stuff like that. And then I started realizing that even if I don't want to, my subconscious mind tries to like imitate his writing. Right. That's why I stopped. Like it's been four or five years that I've not seen like any piece of content because I feel that's the way. You can keep it original because I'm sure that a lot of people are thinking what you're thinking, but that at least you know that you have not seen it and made it. So it's just that to be original, that's what I feel. Like people have their own stuff. But this is how I, I do is like to be original, I think I should not watch anything and just I travel around a lot, I meet a lot of people, I talk to them. That's how I write content. Dhruv, what, what do you think about you know the importance of original I mean, content? I, I original really ideas. Let, I'll read you what the Unique content. <laughs> I really want the answer to rest with Nick because we've had many conversations about this and he's being very, very polite. But the brutal truth is that um, the game, the interest of this game is going to be how many of these creators actually sustain. Correct. I'm not even going to say for a five-year period of time. I'm going to say, are you going to be able to find sustenance um, in your area of creativity literally even for like 24 months? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I think what Nick said is super critical, which is that finding your own voice and because remember let's understand the larger game all the big platforms are going to want to find a way to get all these new creators to a certain size and then after that as we have all understood and realized the algo starts to kick in right the platforms will always want to win and that's perfectly fine there will be a balance there will be a you know a structure of how it gets done it's the nature of the game but what keeps creators relevant and consistent is that uh, unique creative voice that they have and I think that's really the long-term game, right? So uh, I, I, can't, I can't, you know, uh, intelligently as, as a non-creator myself, but very fortunate to work with the best creative minds in the country. That is something that now, we, I've been in the business for 15 years. Right. That doesn't change no matter who you are. Whether you've been working in Bollywood like myself or now working in digital, that consistent voice is something that everybody needs. I think I, think I have an answer for this. Like, uh, do you, uh, what's your name again? You came to pick me up, right? Pratik. Pratik, do you watch content? Name five creators, like off, off the head. Super fast. Vionik, Ashish, Chanchalani, Harsh, Benewal. Flying Beast. See now, have you heard, and I knew this, and I knew this would be the answer. Have you guys heard any new name in this? Anybody who's not doing this in the past five years? That's true, that's true. So it's, it's important, the originality of the content, 
will take you actually, you know, to the higher goal. Name the fifth one, dude. That's the, that's the thing. Like, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of people doing uh, a lot of stuff. They're constantly posting stuff. They are like uh, trying to imitate stuff. They're trying to like, I think the race has become now to how much more that you can put out than how much you value. Yeah, yeah, how much it's valuable. Wonderful. Very interesting. You know, Dhruv, how are brands, you know, uh, seeing content creators? You know, uh, they, they are very keen on associating them, you know, at the script level, you know, integrating with them, working very closely. So how are brands investing into it? Uh, and is uh, it across the sector, sorry, uh, to cut, is it across the sectors, you know, where, uh, you know, they want to associate with the content creators? No, so I think that, uh, I'll, I'll put it, I'll try to put it very simply, the creator economy x brand partnership is is established i don't think you're a brand ma marketer or a anybody who's a custodian of a brand today and if you're not aware of the creator economy you are either going to lose your job or you know your company is not relevant very honestly right um, having said that like with any business the layers at which your understanding of the creator economy exists as a brand has a huge impact with the way you interact with them if you're going to keep it transactional and if you're going to see it as a tick mark, and if you're going to see it as one more way to get top of the funnel impressions and awareness, um, the fact of the matter is right now, you're at the bottom of the pyramid of understanding the creator economy, with all due respect, right? There are organizations who have employed creators. There are organizations who have, um, you know, uh, invested, like you rightly use the word invested, right? You didn't say spend or sponsored, um, uh, right? I mean, they've been doing it for three odd years. The benefits that those brands are gaining from that investment today is giving them a leapfrog element into it. I'll give you a very small example, right? It's something that we take so, uh, it's something we don't realize. For anybody over here who services a brand, etc., uh, today when brands want to actually put out a piece of content, right, they'll come to organizations like mine, they'll come via via to people like Nick and they'll say, look, we want to start this Twitter conversation, right? Our handle should be in conversation with this brand, can you make it happen? And the simple one-line truth is that, boss, that brand that you want to have a conversation with has been investing in Twitter conversations for three years, which is why today they have humanized themselves, almost become like an influencer creator of their own, and that's why they're in a position to have that conversation in front of the audience, right? So I think that depending on how deeply you invest, and, and it's very simple things. Do you surround yourself with young people? I think it's pertinent that Nick asked that question to if I'm not wrong, Pratik, because he looks like a very young man. So it's important that that's the audience which is driving a large chunk of consumerism in this country. And I'm making a generic statement. Are you surrounding yourself with those people? Are you asking yourself the hard questions? Are you treating the influencer slash creator like a commodity? Or are you getting them into the room and saying, boss, I want to partner with you? Because they're actually building communities of their own. And today, Nick's community, for example, is larger than a bunch of television channels put together. And he's engaging with that community every single day and having a conversation with that community and finding a way to keep them locked into him, understanding that they have a hundred other options, right? This is insight that I think any brand would kill to have, right? right? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an insight that I kill to have every single day, right? For the brands that I am building or the work that I am doing. So I think depending on where you are at, uh, if you're at the bottom of the pyramid or the top of the pyramid, you will have that much return on investment. I will say one thing though. Uh, on, on all the positives of it, my closing point on this is that brands are going to demand more and more value for what they're investing in. The entire industry, organizations like mine, you know, mega creators like Dick, we all have to speak that language and be empathetic to the brand's desire to know what is the impact of what I'm doing. Because all the legacy formats, television, you will get your TRPs, print, you will get some version of something. I know, you know, for what you have, and you guys are investing in digital, so you know the roles you're playing. Digital creators are still making that science legitimate. And right. as that science gets more and more legitimate, this industry is, you know, every brand is going to work. I'll tell you, you know, I was having a recent conversation with uh, one of the marketers in the uh, retail industry. So he told me, I mean, like, you know, why they consider content creators, you know, as partners. Because he said that, you know, when we share a product with them, you know, they are the first guys who experience that product. And they create content around that. And they take our experience far and wide. So they are basically, you know, delivering our experience to the people, which people believe, and then they come back to them. I'll tell you why they believe, okay? And this is the... So I feel that if you see, if you watch a television ad of Shah Rukh Khan driving Sandro, you wouldn't believe. 
that Shahrukh is driving Santro, right? If you see an ad with, say, uh, any new creator or like people like us driving Santro, they would feel that I'm driving it, I'm using it and they feel that if I can use it and if I feel it's a good one, I think they would buy it too. No, that's true. I mean, like, you know, uh, as a content creator, you, you can talk a lot more than actually Shahrukh can talk in that 30 second. You can talk about the features, you can talk about the, how the steering works, what's the engine size. There are a lot of stuff where you can, you know, actually talk about that. No, that's pretty interesting. So, Nick, how do you see, I mean, like, you know, uh, the content creators, you know, uh, you know, brewing up in, in the smaller towns, you know, going beyond the metro regions, you know, how do you see, uh, you know, this growing in the Bharat region? It's going amazing. In fact, I personally watch a lot of channels who make those cooking shows. You know, you've seen those uh, uh, people from the village who are Madhita, doing... Yeah, yeah, Madhita, yeah. Right. The one they, uh, that came on Vikram movie right now. And uh, I know this one guy who makes swimming pools and stuff like that. I think, I think it's gonna, only going to go wider. It's only going to go wider. It's, uh, now there's a lot of people... Who, you know, what's happening is now there's a lot of people who are in that phase who we were at probably like 10 years ago. Right. Like how we discovered, say, probably... I, I made a switch from awkward to like Facebook 10 years ago and I guess they are on Facebook right now. They will come on YouTube, they will come on Instagram. So I think that shift is happening right now and it's only going to go wider. Interesting, interesting. You know, Dhruv, distribution of revenue across content creators is an important subject. The top content creators, you know, maybe 1% or 2% takes the larger pie. Then comes the mid-level content creators and uh, I'm not sure if I'm right in saying this, but even if the, the you know, the smaller denominator content creators, you know, they, it's based on luck, you know, if they're able to create the right content, you know, get it right, you know, then they might succeed and then sustain. How do you see this economy, you know, how do you see this entire, uh, you know, top, middle and bottom funnel growing? You know, I'll just start by saying in any um, creative industry, right, um, that's the nature of the beast everywhere. Okay. I mean, you look at, you know, the cinema industry globally or in India, the top 1% take 80% of the revenue, whether it's their fees, whether it's their endorsements. Uh, if you look at gamers, I think if we have in the room, we have the founder of Rooter here and he'll tell you he's one of the biggest, uh, you know, partners of the gaming industry in India. And uh, he'll tell you very much the same thing. He probably won't be so open about the numbers, uh, <laughs> but he will tell you very much the same thing. So it's not very unlike any other creative industry when talent is at the core. Um, to help with it, investment bankers, the top 1% are taking home 80% of the funds, right? So I'm just saying that, uh, how do I see it getting distributed? It's linked to your earlier question. Okay. As more and more brands, because you spoke about the creator side of Bharat, mm -hmm. what I think is going to be super exciting is when the next 1,000 brands that aren't serviced by the top agencies in Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, right? The, the, the local sweet shop who says that, boss, I'm catering to this 10 kilometers, and I want one local creator who does really cool stand-up or really good mimicry of a big Bollywood star. I want him to come to my store and I want him to say today everything's at 50% off and I'm going to hand it out to you. That local impact and excitement when it goes to Dhanbad or it goes to Itanagar, then it's a, it's a game over. And I can tell you organizations like mine are investing in that future. So when that explosion happens with brands and corporates and when that meets uh, the inspiration that creators are getting from guys like him and our growing and going side by side, that's when you're going to have a completely new way of, you know, digitization is going to go to that uh, level. Then that's why I said billion dollars is, is too small. Also, the community is quite strong when you're just growing up. Okay. Like, the more wider you become, then it's, it's like Shah Rukh Khan. Like, you know, then you become like, okay, he's too commercial right now. The more smaller you are, the more tighter you are. So, I, I own like nine brands right now. I, like, I own nine companies. We have a lot of products. So, Personally, if you ask me who would like to invest on more is like micro creators more than like right. the top 1% because the impact is harder there. True, true. Yeah, I, that I, doesn't I, mean you guys don't invest on us. Yeah? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and um, regulation is also an important subject, you know, when it comes into the, the content business, you know. So how do you see, uh, you know, the regulations being driven? You know, there's a draft also. Government is also working on a draft bill you know, on the content side. So, you know, how do you see, is it necessary, you know, is it, is it needed to regulate the content industry? I mean, uh, once again, not unique to the creator economy. Regulation exists in every popular culture domain. Uh, it, it, you know, in, a, in, in, in our country where we have a, 
a decent amount of creative freedom and we are, um, you know, you compare ourselves to our immediate neighbors, we're truly in a great space. Um, I think that it's, it's a good move that we have the kind of regulations that are coming in because the fact is the barrier for entry mm -hmm. to influence on, right. uh, you know, on social media today, there is none, right? right. So there is undoubtedly the need for some level of certification, some level of uh, regulation, but as with any great public-private partnership, and I, and I do have to say from, you know, we were involved in this entire um, work that ASCII did last year, and I think that and they have some amount of, you know, impact and relationship with the government uh, and the, the communications industry in the government, the INB ministries, the approach was very forward-thinking. Okay. They invested in it, they said, we understand what you need, uh, they helped ASCII acquire a bunch of technological tools, so I think that it's going in the right direction. What we have to just be aware of that every time something comes out, everybody goes into a tizzy. You know, creators go crazy saying, Hamara dhanda bando jayega. Right. Brands go crazy saying, shit, I'm not gonna put this hashtag. This is the nature of any growing industry. Good communication, complete clarity of thought, and creating systems and bodies that are representing both the creator side and the brand side and the consumer, just like you have for the consumer courts, etc. It's, it's, it's gonna allow it. It's just that the, the world is much larger. You maybe have 10,000 ads in a year, but you'll have 10 crore you know, pieces of influencer content in a year which is sponsored. That's just a tech system that we have to arrive at, but I think we're going in the right direction. Uh, Nick, do you concur with his thoughts? Yeah, I understand, like, uh, I've seen the changes, like, we've started, like, as I said, I started nine years ago, and uh, uh, we used to, uh, YouTube used to send us for this thing called uh, speed dating with brands. Where we, where we should tell brands why to come on digital. Okay. And like, you know, I think we've come a long way from like, here we are a viral video banana to like, them understanding micro creators and stuff like that. And then obviously if the business has come so wide and it's become so big, there have to be regulations that have to, I think we're going the right direction as Dhruv said. Great, great, great. You know, I think let's go to the audience, you know, if they have any questions about, anyone? Yes. Yeah, the lady here. Can you please share the mic with him? Towards the left, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, my question is to all of you here, uh, to understand, like, you know, we talked a lot about creating an impact uh, with the help of creators and how brands should partner, but I also think that there is a hit and miss sometimes, like sometimes some brands get it right and sometimes brands don't get it right. So do you think that the agency you go through with, like the how you approach a creator to partner with the brand, matters a lot or not? Like, do you think that the agency plays a success factor or no? I think, to be honest, like if you ask me individually, I think uh, the brand should understand more like about the creators because uh, I think if they want to do an ad, they should probably do an ad, right? And I know my audience, right? So I know what is going to work, what is not going to work. I to truly understand uh, what do you want to place? So if you let me do it creatively, like I have a thumb rule for writing us scripted, branded video. So I write a script, okay, uh, with the brand involved in it. And then I take out the brand from the script and I ask myself, is this script something that I'll make irrespective of the brand is there or no? And if the answer is yes, only then I put it out. That's why over this last nine years, we have now got like, hey, you're sold out, you're just doing brand. In fact, most of my stuff which has more views are branded. So I think they should lead on us on like how, in fact, I feel sometimes that the agencies adds a lot of layers which are not even like involved by the brand, then, then it becomes like tougher for us to like kind of, uh, it's, I think, you know, more than them pitching or them saying this is the brief, this is what we need, I think all they have to say is this is what we need and we should all sit together, mm. say the agency, the brand and the creator should sit, sit together and like try to come up with an idea or try to come up with something which would highlight that the most plus make it for me, like for, for instance, plus make it funny. Because if you add 10 layers of, oh, this is it, this is how the brand campaign, this is what it is, this is how we position, this is how it is, then like obviously if you're making like a reel or like a 20 minute video, uh, not everybody wants to like sit on it so much and they know that, that this will impact their algorithm because if their video doesn't go well, they're worried whether the next video would go well or no. So I think it's a collective effort more than like anybody. I wonder how many creators would be open to that also because you mentioned that we should all get in a room but sometimes 
it happens and sometimes it doesn't happen. But it's a good suggestion. So thanks. Thank you. Now we have time for one more question. Yes. Yeah. So um, earlier in one of the panel uh, panel discussions, someone mentioned that um, you know there was a saturation point when uh, Bollywood celebrities were trying to sell some products because they knew that you know, or maybe you were only mentioning Nick that uh, Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, nobody will believe if Shah Rukh Khan is trying to sell Santro. Similarly, with influencers, now that we are seeing so many influencers promoting inorganic, uh, you know. Uh, content in terms of promoting brands, there will be a saturation point for audience because they will understand that it's a paid effort? I think it's already there. I think uh, we've come there where people understand that it's paid. And I think that our audience has also become so advanced that they know it's paid. So I've got like in a lot of my ads, I've got comments like, this is how an ad should be. Like, so they understand that it's an ad and obviously now we have all those regulations. We we put hashtag ad, we put like, like you know, in, in collaboration and stuff. So I think they understand that it's an ad and now it's like f to each its own. I think it's become like how I said that this is how I write and that's how I don't face backlash. I think it's to each its own. I guess everybody has to be more creative and have to be more fun around making stuff, I guess. I'll just, I'll just add something here. It's more of an anecdote, right? I think that... Um See, fundamentally, I think that as consumers, what's happened is whether you're watching television or you're strolling through Instagram, we've reached a point where um, we don't really want any interruptive kind of activity. We want to be in our flow, right? I'm watching comedy videos. I don't want suddenly to be in a situation where, Are you, I'm, kuch bech hai, right? I'm watching a great television show and in the middle of that, I'm getting sold a product. Which is why, uh, you know, this entire, it's a very bastardized term and, you know, we, we throw it around so casually, branded content. But what is really the purpose of branded content and why do these guys play such a critical role is that the movement is towards that piece of content feeling non-interruptive. And that can only happen if what you're seeing is a story. Because as human beings, psychologically, we're only driven by stories. We hate to be sold stuff unless we're seeking it. Unless we want to go like how Nick said earlier, you want to know how something works or you're seeking something specifically, then we're happy to be sold to. But when we're watching content, we want to be entertained or informed, even the stuff that is being sold to us has to be in the form of a story. So I think that's really uh, your point, which I'll, which I'll drive out. And I think that's the future of advertising as well. Right? That's the big struggle for all your big advertisers right now. How do we go from, you know, uh, trying to sell something to trying to tell a story? And in that, it's not easy, but in that, find a way to connect with the consumer. And that's what these guys have cracked, I think, better than any of the old folks, uh, uh, including myself. And I think that's why it's so exciting and fun. Of course, they'll get it wrong. Of course, there'll be learnings. But, you know, it's certainly the future. Dhru, you're not old. We don't like doing that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.